How did an unassuming secretary from Edmonton, Alberta, take down Scotland Yard and force London's police commissioner to resign? Not many people know about her courageous actions until now. Our London correspondent, Tara Nelson tonight with her amazing story. It was the summer of 2005, a summer no one would soon forget. A summer London was brought to its knees and a summer this woman would pay a painful price for telling the truth. It was the scariest time in my life. She is Lana Vandenberg from Edmonton, Alberta. Few people know her incredible story until now. She was living in London that fateful summer, working as an administrative assistant for the Independent Police Complaints Commission. A simple clerical job, but this unassuming and sweet Canadian never expected that she would be thrust into an ugly terrorist investigation. I basically caught, I, I caught the police in a lie. Um, and by doing that, I broke their code of silence. It all began with a series of bombs that ripped through the city's transportation system. It paralyzed the city, terrifying police, and it put this man in the crossfire. Their man was Hussein Osman, but while staking out his South London flat, they misidentified a neighbor, 27-year-old Brazilian electrician Jean-Charles de Menezes. They followed him through the city, into a subway station, and shot him dead. In the hours and days that followed, police held press conferences and said de Menezes had been acting suspiciously. He was wearing bulky clothes that could have hidden a bomb. He jumped the turnstile at the tube station and he lunged at officers when they approached him. He wasn't carrying anything. He wasn't doing anything for this to be, you know, for the police to justify themselves in shooting him eight times seven times in the head and once in the shoulder. The photos that I had seen, um, there was a lot of blood on the seat and there was um, something else on the seat, like lumps of something. And I didn't know it at the time, but later I learned that it was actually his brains. Lana says she carried the detail of this killing like a ton of bricks on her shoulders. She wanted no part of it. But the police lied about what they had initially said in the news. Um, John Charles wearing a backpack, carrying, wearing an overcoat, running from the police. All of it was lies. Lana feared the truth in this case was so explosive it might never be revealed. So she took the biggest risk of her life and shared her frightening secret with a girlfriend. That friend was dating a British TV journalist and Lana not only decided to tell him everything, she handed over documents and photos. The big story exploded publicly. I just kind of sat there thinking, oh my God, what have I done? It didn't take long for police to figure out who the whistleblower was. And they came back at Lana with a vengeance. They searched her apartment. She was arrested and thrown in jail. Telling the truth, um, I was uh, basically um, labeled this hardened criminal from the police. All charges against Lana were eventually dropped and her whistleblowing started the ball rolling. Investigations were launched into Scotland Yard's operational procedures. The command structure and communications were heavily criticized. And then, the climax, the resignation of the police commissioner, Sir Ian Blair. It is my duty to ensure that the appropriate lessons are learnt and acted upon. The whole incident so embarrassing, Scotland Yard still refuses to talk about it on camera nearly four years later. For the de Menezes family, finally it was vindication. She met the family and she says it was one of the most emotional moments of her life. There was lots of tears, hugging. Lana has returned to her life in Canada, but she says she still doesn't second guess the moment that turned her world upside down. I don't have any regrets at all about what I did. I sleep with a clear conscience.